In this tutorial, we're going to learn item effects or take effects in Reaper. Now, Reaper calls this take effects instead of item effects. I find this a bit misleading, especially for new users who don't use takes that often, because they might be put off and think, well, I don't use takes, so why would I use take effects? But you do use items. So that's why I prefer to call it item effects. Anyway, so in Reaper, not only can we put effects on tracks over here, we can put effects directly on items and they'll play back in real time. So we don't have to process them. So it makes it very flexible to work with items and effects on items in Reaper. So I have a project in front of me here. Let me play a few. Now it's not the most exciting track in the world. So I wanna do some stuff to the intro to make it a little more exciting, a little more dramatic. So I'm gonna do that with item effects or take effects. I'm gonna treat these items separately from these items. Now normally, if you can only put effects on tracks, you have to put effects there and then bypass them through the rest of the song. But because we can use item effects, we can put effects right on certain items and not on others. So I'm gonna add some effects just to these items right here but not to these. And that transition should make it a little more dramatic. Now, there's a few different ways of adding effects to media items. We can start by selecting it. We can hit this button right here for the item properties, which opens up this dialog. And we can go to our take effects or item effects right here. That's one way of doing it. We could also use the key command for item properties, F2. And that opens it up this way. And we could choose take effects from here. We don't have to use the item properties dialog to add effects. We could do it right from the menu under item, go to take, show effects chain for active take. And that opens it up as well. We could also right click an item, and then from this menu, we can go to take, show effects chain for active take. One of my favorite ways of doing it is with the key command right here, Shift E. So we could select an item, hit Shift E and we can add item effects right from here. So I'm gonna add an EQ to loop number one. I'll just double click this. So now we can see that loop one has a Reaper EQ on it. See it's labeled right here. So I saved the preset earlier, intro filter loop, and that basically filters out the low end and the top end. Let's hear what that sounds like. I'll solo it. Here's what it sounds like bypassed. And here's what it sounds like on. So it basically filters the loop. Now let's close this, unsolo it. So now once again, we could see that this item has an effect on it, Reaper EQ. Now there's another way of opening and closing effects on items. And I kind of like this way, let me show you. Go to Preferences, we'll choose underneath Appearance, Media, and we go to the Media Item Buttons. If we choose Effects right here and close it, a little button appears in our item right here. It says Effects. So we can just click this button and it opens up the effect for that item. Now one of the reasons I like this, instead of using the menu or even doing the key command, is that we don't have to actually select this item to open it. We don't have to select it, then go to a menu item, or use a key command. So if there are other items already selected, like this, and we don't want to deselect them, just to open this effect, we can just hit this button and it opens right up. No need to select it. So that's why I kind of like using the effects button. So now another thing I might want to do is rename the effect. Right now it says Reaper EQ. That's not really very helpful. It doesn't actually tell us what the EQ is doing. So if we open this back up, and right click this, we could rename the effects instance right here. Now this doesn't rename the plugin for the entire project, just for this instance. So I'm gonna rename this filter EQ. So now that name shows up in our item. It's a little more descriptive. And again, you notice the effect is on this item, but not in this item. So if I solo from here, you'll hear the loop filtered and then become unfiltered over here. because there's no effect on this item. 
So let's add an effect to the strings as well. But instead of doing it from here, I'm going to copy the same effect to the strings. So I'm going to open this one here. And then rather than starting all over, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to drop it onto the strings. See how the cursor changes? Showing that I'm going to add this effect to another item. So I'll drop it. Now the strings have the effect as well. So now I'll close it. And let's hear the strings soloed. I think that sounds pretty good. So now let's listen to what we have. With these two media items with effects on them, the filter EQ transitioning to the section here with no effects. I think that's a little bit more interesting. Now, another thing I really like about using this feature is we can make transitions from effects to no effects or from different type of effects by using crossfades. Let me give you an example. On the string, I'm going to split it right here, hit S. Now you see both items have effects on them. So I'm going to turn the effect off one of them. I'm going to hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and just click the effects button right here and it goes away. There's no effects on this item now. So again, we'll hear that transition from here to here. Obviously it's kind of drastic, but if we put a crossfade here, it would fade from one effect to the other, or in this case, one effect to no effect. So let's right click this, hit X to put a crossfade in, and now let's hear that transition. pretty nice and very interesting. So by using item effects, we could crossfade different effects to make smooth transitions, which is something you can't do with the track effects, at least not very easily. So one of the things I want to do with this crossfade is put it over here so when all the music comes back in, the strings are actually less filtered. So I'm going to trim this over to here and the same on this side to about here. So let's hear what that sounds like. I think that might work. So I have our effects on the loop and the strings, and then it's going to crossfade, having no effects on the strings before it comes to here with no effects on the strings. So let's check that out. I think that's a lot more dramatic. And by using crossfades with item effects or take effects, we can create some really interesting possibilities. So that's pretty much it. That's item effects or take effects in Reaper. I hope you learned something in this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.